Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2018 career mode, episode number 132 today for the Monaco Grand Prix in Season 7. If you guys did miss the previous one then, and the Spanish Grand Prix, then be sure to go check the one out before you see this one. But heading into this weekend, then some potential of rain in qualifying, so that will be a bit of an annoyance, to be honest. So let's pray the rain comes a little bit later, maybe, in the session. We can actually make it through into Q2 and then Q3 subsequently. But uh, going into this one then, we can see Mercedes with a major upgrade, or probably ultimate upgrades there really honestly to catch us up and also Red Bull and so Mercedes now are technically on paper the second best team on the grid you can't quite tell there but on the pixels they are literally just above us as uh, Alfa Romeo Sauber and then we are just above Red Bull there but pretty much on the same level peg so this is going to be intriguing to see if Hamilton and Hulkenberg come up with us and are right there in the fight because it was already pretty close between Red Bull, Renault and ourselves so now it might be a four way uh, team fight uh, for the kind of top eight positions as it were so this might be very interesting indeed. So we go into Q1 then. Very overcast condition to the point where we've got the floodlights out actually here in Monaco. But at the moment you can see we're on the hypersoft tyres. So it's all dry for now. So thankfully the rain is staying away. And we can make it through at least into Q2. But I think there might be some uh, trouble uh, brewing in the skies. And the rain might come down in Q2. But at least in Q1 we can make it through nice and easily there. Leclerc up in P6. The Mercedes cars though in P2 and P3. Hamilton and Hulkenberg. So you can definitely see those improvements. And surprise, surprise. Gasly there, top of the session, the Red Bull looking pretty damn good, although his teammate Verstappen way down the order in P15 only just about makes it into Q2, so once again, Gasly showing up Verstappen very much so, but into Q2 then, we move on, it's got even more overcast and you can actually see, if you look close enough at the chassis and the halo as well, especially the rain is coming down, it's still dry enough apparently for us to go on hypersoft tyres and the rain's going to uh, get heavier basically as we go through Q2, so as soon as I loaded into the Q2 session, I just clicked my buttons, went straight out on the flying lap, so this is the fastest uh, we could have got out onto the circuit and so it is very slippery you're about to see the car it's clearly already to turn one very very slow and very oversteery so the track is very greasy and slippery so we're gonna have to take it carefully but basically the fastest we can go right now is probably the fastest we'll ever go in this session so it's now or never pretty much in Q2 as Gasly sets the fastest session but we are literally tiptoeing around uh, Monaco even more so than you usually do around Monaco obviously the street circuit very very tough around here in dry conditions let alone these damp ones we come through the last corner very very under Siri missing the apex there a little bit of a, a correction to try and get the car in a straight line across the line we get up into P3 there happy about that to split the two Renaults Sainz and Alonso I actually take the entire out uh, the entire in lap there and I crash on my way into the in lap and break my front wing because uh, that's how slippery it was but we come in then and at this point I'm just putting my two hands together and praying no one goes faster the simulation doesn't ruin me here and I can actually make it into the top 10 shootout and lo and behold thankfully we do make it in in P3 Leclerc matches me in P4 very very thankful for that Verstappen though is knocked out here of Q2 only Gasly made it through the two Renaults one of the Mercedes cars both for India surprisingly and actually Hartley is the McLaren that makes it through not Dan Ricciardo as you can see the few at the very bottom end that timing screen had to go on to Inters uh, so some of them didn't go out fast enough basically in Q2. Speaking of Inters though into Q3 it is time for Inters finally so the rain it was forecast for the entirety of Saturday eventually in reality only hit the like, end of the, uh, the qualifying session so now we just try and do the best job we can I'm not too confident though to be honest because you guys know me I've, I've never been amazing on Inters but also at the same time having said that this car did feel pretty good actually even in Inter conditions it felt slow it looked slow but the lap time was actually pretty de damn decent because if we go towards the line at the moment Alonso I think has gone fastest but we go across the line and we set the provisional pole position time so it may have felt like a pretty bad lap but that's just because of the conditions in reality the timing was pretty damn good and as we go on to our second flying lap as we can go for two runs obviously here because it's inters we have our uh, two inters tires to use here I go a lot faster already to turn one so I guess I took turn one so much more confidently than I did in the first run so already about two tenths up there as we've been knocked down to p2 though Gasly is back on provisional pole I'm on the front row though at the moment ahead of both Renaults we're setting a purple lap time in the first second so even though I've been knocked off provisional pole, I think I might have a very good chance actually maybe matching Gasly and getting a pole position for the first time in this Alfa Romeo Sauber car. We can maybe just keep this time on the table as we move on to the end of the lap then. We do pretty much keep that time on the table, but will it be enough? We go across the line and it's not enough unfortunately there. We miss out by literally a few hundreds there to Pierre Gasly in the Red Bull Honda, the man who replaced me at Red Bull this season. He's on pole position once again. I'm in second place. 
place, though, on the front row. I'll call that a very successful day in the office around Monaco. Thoroughly beating Leclerc, obviously, in these kind of conditions, especially around Monaco. It really is just a bit about, you know, the luck, the timing, and just getting the lap in when it matters. And we did two of those in that session. So very happy with that. And obviously, being Monaco, this is going to be very good for us in terms of track position. The, you know, theoretically, the only job we have to d then do to, uh, tomorrow is try and overtake Gasly in the first stint, and then we could try and control this race for a win, potentially, in our first win, remember, because Leclerc, my teammate's got one win already this season. I have not, and it's the sixth round of the season, so I'm slacking, really, so could this be the one where we finally do it? Because also, remember, guys, I haven't actually, despite Monaco usually being the place where most players get their win against the AI, I have never got a win at Monaco yet on this on this game yet in career mode, so could this be the moment, season seven, where I finally break that back and get the win at Monaco. Let's find out. A proper road race and in the true meaning of the word. That was how Mr Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean Sea. There's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two mile long circuit to Monaco. The cars climb around 40 meters up through Beau Rivage, onto the casino and then descending down towards the harbor through sector two. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of the 19 corners here, seven to the left and 11 to the right. There's one single DRS zone as well, so don't expect that to make overtaking any easier today. So let's have a look then at the starting grid ahead of the Monaco Grand Prix for Season 7 of my F1 2018 career mode. And on the front row and pole position is the man in form, Pierre Gasly, the Frenchman in the Red Bull Honda. Alongside him, though, is myself in the Alfa Romeo Sauber. Third place, Van Dorn, surprisingly, in the Toro Rosso, ahead of Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso, Hulkenberg in P6. So the Claire P7 with Perez, Hartley and Valtteri Bottas round at the top 10. There's Ben Ocon and Dan Ricciardo on the next row. Then comes Hamilton, Verstappen with Grosjean Vettel next, Raikkonen and Lance Stroll, and the last row taken up by Sergei Sorokin and Kevin Magnussen with a grid penalty ahead of the Monaco Grand Prix. Right, so here we are then on the front row of the grid for the Monaco Grand Prix. Like I said, one of the best places to be. It wasn't, it's not quite pole position, but it's good enough there. And if we can get a good enough jump, you never know. We might be able to get into first place by turn one. But the strategy today, default, actually surprisingly, for the first time ever, the default is telling me a one-stop. Usually the default in the game is always the two-stop there. But the top of the screen is the one-stop onto super soft tires. Probably will do that. For now, we'll leave it on having the selected strategy be the two-stop. But highly likely we move to the one-stop because the track position is just too powerful around Monaco, especially with the traffic as well later on the Grand Prix. Lower fuel, but uh, not too low, actually, as we had it there before. But we're raring to go, and we're just going to get straight into it then. As we psych ourselves up and rev up the car to five red lights for the Monaco Grand Prix, the duel in the Formula 1 calendar for Season 7 here. The fire lights are out, and we're underway. A lot of wheel spin there from Gasly on the right, and it's a good start for us. Could we get into first place? Into turn one, round the outside. We are into first place by nose, but then the power of the Red Bull Honda comes in clutch, and Gasly powers past us there, and he's through back up into first place, up the hill, and he's in the lead. Van Dorn keeps P3, so does very well in that Toro Rosso. I remarked that, actually didn't realise uh, on the grid that he was in third place. He did a fantastic job yesterday, but uh, all remains put then, and unfortunately just couldn't quite get that. The Honda power came in quite a fair bit. I'm obviously running quite a fair bit of downforce here, being a Monaco setup, and I guess Gasly Gasly maybe is a little bit lower on aero because the Red Bull being the Red Bull is very comfortable with the aero and the natural chassis downfall. So he just had enough power to pass us and uh, get back in the lead. And so after that, unfortunately, it was a very Monaco-esque kind of first stint here. We're on lap six, so five laps later, and we're still second place. But the only good thing is myself and Gasly have been a world of our own, and we're basically pushing each other to go faster and faster. You look at the minimap. No one else is behind us. Van Dorn has been a huge bottleneck in the Toro Rosso there and has held back everyone behind him. The two Renaults, my teammate Leclerc, and so it really just is me and Gasly out front in one and two. And here are the two Renaults as we move on to the next lap. And Alonso there is actually behind Carlos Sainz. And Alonso is going to come in for an earlier pit stop and try and undercut on his teammate and Leclerc if he can help it there. As Leclerc continues on, Van Dorn there still in P3. But like I said, being a bit of a bottleneck here. And so that's actually working well for me to just, you know, do a job of trying to keep Gasly on but at this stage, I haven't had enough pace to try and make a move here. So we're just kind of waiting and uh, kind of waiting for a chance. Really. 
I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that chance can come at some point in later on this race. But as we move on then, Van Dorn, Sainz in, Leclerc will continue on, Gasly's in, and so it will actually be a 1-2 for the Alfa Romeo Sauber team. Myself and Leclerc looks like, remember, the default strategy was one-stop, so that means my teammate by default should be trying the one-stop as well. So in an ideal world, at the moment, this 1-2 we have for Alfa Romeo Sauber could stay put because we're all in a one-stop. Everyone in the top 10, well, most of them are on a two-stop, it would appear, but we've got a few cars behind Leclerc, uh, i.e. Hulkenberg in the Mercedes car there, Ocon in the Toro Rosso. Those two looks like they're also following Leclerc on the one stop. But Gasly's in the two Renaults, the, the other kind of cars around the Force India, the other uh, Red Bull member of Verstappen down the order. But Alonso actually jumped Carlos Sainz in that pit stop phase. So the undercut did work for Alonso, and he's now ahead of uh, Sainz and also Van Dorn. Van Dorn lost two places there. So that was the pace difference between the Renault and the Toro Rosso there. That Van Dorn pit the same time as Sainz and Alonso and actually lost blow, uh, both. Uh, and actually lost both places. I guess he lost the place to Science in the pit lane. Uh, with, a, with a bad pit stop, I guess, compared to the Renault guys. So we're still in the way as Leclerc finally comes in. We're going to continue on for one more lap on lap 11 and then come in for our pit stop then. And so now will be a case of where do we come out in terms of traffic. It probably will be behind everyone that already pit before, the, the Gasly and the, and the two Renaults. But crucially, we're going on to Super Softs, just like Leclerc. And so now we go to the end of the Grand Prix, whereas those guys have pit onto Ultras, so they will have to pit again. And so unless the safety car saves them, they are not going to have a very good chance. So again, like I say, I reiterate, if everything goes the way I want it to go, we could have a 1-2 on the cards here for Sauber, and I could be on my way for a win here at the Monaco Grand Prix, but never, you know, guarantee anything around Monaco. It's been such a crazy Grand Prix on this year's game, and so you just never know. But at the moment, Ocon is the one that leads the way. Then you've got Hulkenberg in second place, Hamilton in third. But look at this. There's a huge gap from Ocon to Hulkenberg here in first to second, because Hulkenberg, clearly you can hopefully see, is going very slow and is backing up this entire train of Hamilton, the, the uh, McLaren of, I think that's Hartley. Then you've got Gasly, the two Renaults, and then I'm catching up to them. And so you've got this huge uh, domino effect here behind this traffic. And you can see we are right there behind Sainz now. And look at the mini-map. There's that turquoise dot of Hulkenberg and then the blue dot of the Toro Rosso in first place. That is how much time Hulkenberg's lost and how much time he's backed everyone up because he's got some sort of car issue. I don't know what it is, but my engineer said it's been some sort of car issue. And so he's holding all of us up. And Monaco being Monaco, it's so hard to pass around here. So Ocon is going to gain a big, big time here. And he's on a one-stop as well. So Ocon now somehow is going to get into the mix, maybe. It might even trouble us. You never know. But you guys know me around here at Monaco. I'm not going to wait around and sit. We're going to try and make some passes if we can. And so we're going to line up a move on Sainz. There's going to be a big domino effect into Raskas. And here we go now. The infamous down the inside Raskas pass on the Spaniard. My rival for the last two seasons, really. And we're up into P7 of this Grand Prix then. Uh, you know, big, big uh, domino effect of the breaking zone. You know, Hulkenberg going slow makes Hamilton go slow. The, the McLaren, Gasly, Alonso and, and Sainz. And so that was a very easy pass actually in the end of it down the inside of Raskas. And it might be another one on Alonso because look, still this train is going on with this Mercedes cars. Hamilton's got passed, but Hulkenberg's still holding up the McLaren. And so now we try around the outside of Raskas. Now it's going to be a very tasty move on Alonso there. Big uh, t uh, tank slapper there of Oversty on the exit though. And Alonso is going to have DRS and comes back as now on the outside, on the left, round the outside as the McLaren now tries to overtake Hulkenberg up ahead as we go up the hill then Alonso's re overtaken us but there goes Gasly now flying past Hulkenberg so eventually the slow Mercedes car is too slow and the McLaren and Red Bull get past there and so Hamilton's already been released the McLaren and Gasly are now released and so now it's up to Alonso myself and the rest of us to try and overtake this slow Mercedes car although I think it comes in now as we move on to lap 18 with DRS open still trying to chase after Alonso we're keeping it honest here but Vettel comes out very awkwardly there blue flags for him he's been lapped here at the Monaco Grand Prix with only 19 laps gone. Very, very odd. But we've got yellow flags there. I think there might have been some contact, you know, between Vettel and maybe Sainz or Leclerc, potentially, as it was very close between myself and uh, Vettel. So it was even closer, I think, between Sainz. And there you go. Confirmation. Vettel out of this Grand Prix then. So there must have been some contact then between himself and one of the cars behind us then. And so as we move through with 20 laps to go in this Grand Prix, more yellow flags behind us. And that's going to trigger a full safety car in this Grand Prix there. Uh, not surprised, though. Monaco, you know, a street circuit. 
get yours gonna have a high likely chance of a safety guard here so it comes out Alonso is gonna come in I think under this safety guard I'm gonna stay out though because of course I'm going to the end of the Grand Prix and so even though you might think oh fresh ties it's not worth it it's worth to have track position so this is a replay of why Vettel was out of the Grand Prix now it was actually a simple case of uh, signs came through and just slammed his front his front left tire and just sheared it completely off it was a minimal contact from Sainz's POV but from Vettel's POV quite a hefty slam and very unfortunate there for the German and so his uh, luck has been going from bad to worse here this season but uh, a replay then shows Alonso coming in and in the lead of this Grand Prix is actually Espen Ocon then so that gap that Ocon pulled when Hulkenberg was pulling uh, put, well, yeah, slowing everyone down has basically meant that Ocon's been gifted into first place if it wasn't for Ocon I would be the lead person in this race at the moment uh, forget the lapped cars I would be the leader in this entire Grand Prix if it wasn't for Ocon getting some luck from Hulkenberg so very frustrating but like I said you can never count some luck uh, happening uh, going our way in Monaco because it's just such a chaotic Grand Prix. So it is Ocon that leads the way. I'm in second place and Leclerc is in third as everyone else who was in the top 10 has made their pit stop as now uh, the Haas gets out of the way on lap 22 as we go for the green and go for the restart here and now we just try and do the best job we can. We first have to navigate though that traffic up ahead before we even can set our eyes on Ocon there. We've got quite a fair bit of traffic and we've got more yellow flags behind us there and look at the top left we're down to 16 13 runners from 19 runners in this Grand Prix we're down to 13 there there must have been a huge horrendous crash now there in the first sector on the restart of this safety car a big crash with the Haas car of uh, Magnussen that is and so many cars avoid the Haas but not the Williams not the Red Bull of Gasly neither Verstappen both Red Bull Hondas are out of the Monaco Grand Prix Gasly T-bones the Mercedes car Verstappen hits the wall and then gets punted by the Force India car Carlos Sainz with no front wing there. I think that was an absolute pile up here at the Monaco Grand Prix. Not a huge one like we've seen in seasons gone by, but still a massive one nonetheless. Of one, two, three, four, five cars there. And this is POV from Carlos Sainz there going up the hill then on the restart. Mangson's already crashed at this point there. Bit of a contact with the wall, then bang, hits the Williams car front wing off there. And then uh, Sainz actually continues on without front wing. But then later in the lap, he has no downforce here, hits the wall on the left. Shears his left tyre, and so that's Sainz out, Gasly out, Verstappen out. So three major title contenders out of the Monaco Grand Prix. It's only myself, Leclerc and Alonso left. Absolute calamity and chaos once again at the Monaco Grand Prix. Does not disappoint any season, it really does. So as it stands now, lap 25, 12 runners left. So we have two more DNFs, and that's pretty much everyone finishing the race then in the points. Very, very weird to see as we move now five laps later onto lap 13. Nine laps to go in this Grand Prix, and a second safety guard gets called out here for another Incident. I'm not too sure which uh, incident this was for though because I could not see it on the replay cameras but for some reason the safety car came out a second time then for someone else. I think it was might have uh, been a front wing situation with one of the McLaren cars. I want to say Dan Ricciardo potentially and so now we're on the restart again. We've got this lap Ferrari car in between myself and Ocon so I was kind of licking my lips uh, maybe there's a chance that I could overtake Ocon here for the race league because we were going to be quite close. But even this lapped car, for you know, a split second being there, gives Ocon a bit of breathing room there. All three of us, Ocon, myself, and Leclerc, are all on super softs going to end this Grand Prix, but it gave him enough room to kind of breathe. As we move on to lap 37, though, the pace of the, uh, the Alfa Romeo Sauber car pulls in, and we do try to catch up to Ocon. We're right up his shop with DRS, but you can see on the exit turn of the uh, last corner, I just don't have enough pace to make a move into turn one. I haven't had enough pace this entire uh, race uh, stint, pretty much, to make a move into Rascas either. We're getting close, and we're trying to set up a move onto the main straight, but again, we just don't have enough room on the second last half of the Grand Prix, onto the last half of the Grand Prix. And so, as much as I was pushing hard to try and overtake this Toro Rosso, to try and get that elusive Monaco win that I've yet to get in this uh, F1 2018 career mode, it just doesn't look like it's going to be possible. And so, for the second time now, I think a Toro Rosso will be winning the Monaco Grand Prix. I want to say, I think, I think Ocon won a Monaco Grand Prix early on. I think Ocon's been on the podium for at Monaco, but this time he's going to win it in the Scuderia Torosso car, so fair play and GG's to him, and it's going to be another annoying second place for us, but albeit still, it's a great second place, everything considered, second and third for myself and Leclerc, so it's going to be a great day in the office for both us Alfa Romeo Sauber cars here at what was another chaotic Monaco Grand Prix. Top job, my friend, top job. I was a bit worried about this one at the start of the weekend, but you pulled through. Thank you. A great win then for the Toro Rosso team today. And Anthony Davidson, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? Well, staying out of trouble is probably the most important factor here. 
in the race where half the field weren't classified at the chequered flag, you were able to guarantee a good result by basically keeping the car running. With their pace and a decent strategy as well, I don't think the race was ever really in doubt. So another classic F1 2018 game, Monaco Grand Prix. Ocon wins it, Hartley with a great P4 in the McLaren there. The likes of Bottas and the Force India Alter doing well. You've got some penalties there as well. Alonso down the order. And so it means in the championship, Gasly though, he had such an advantage that he still has the lead of the championship then, despite DNFing out this Grand Prix then. We're in second place though, Alonso to, uh, P3. And look how close it is now between those top three. So it's already very, very spicy at the moment. Leclerc and also Ocon aren't actually too far behind. Ocon's thrust himself in the Toro Rosso car. Ocon is in P4 of this championship. So he's, uh, he's going to be pretty damn happy about the driver transfer he made this season to the Toro Rosso team. You've got Alfa Romeo Sauber then leading the Constructors' Championship with that double podium position. So that's very good news for us as a team ahead of Red Bull and Renault. But obviously it remains to be seen how the rest of the European season goes. But as things go for this race at least, a very, very good ending to uh, what is... Uh, well, it could have been easily a bad one for us. You know, you never know. You could get caught up in that incident. And thankfully we didn't. And Leclerc didn't. And we are able to pull it through as a team with P2 and P3. So let's now go to some questions for Claire before we wrap out the episode. Great work out there today. How do you think it went? You must be thrilled to be up on the podium. I'm going to have to go with thrilled but expecting it because I thought the one stop would at least you know, give us a good chance to go for the win and we were very close to the win but albeit I'll take second place though so thrilled to be expecting it. You're breaking all expectations. What's your secret? I thought about maybe going for the bottom one, maybe a bit of team uh, sportsmanship there, but in the end I thought I'd just go cheeky again and say that would be telling uh, if it was a secret but that's not going to get us anything actually as an answer. Did you feel comfortable in the wet weather today? This was about qualifying, so I thought I'd just go with no comment because it didn't really affect the race at all and it wasn't really much of an issue in qualifying either. So talk us through what happened between you and your rival today. And with Charles Leclerc, it's been a great, great battle uh, so far this season. I want to say we've been pushing each other. It's been a good show uh, for the fans, I guess, as well. Appreciate your time. And so that will see us to the end of a very entertaining Monaco Grand Prix episode. Guys, if you did enjoy that, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, you can subscribe for weekly Formula 1 content. We get a sponsor bonus there from the contract. or well, not sponsor bonus, a goal objective bonus of a compl uh, complete clean race there. So we get some extra resource points, even though it won't matter for us because we maxed out our car. But that has been a pretty successful Monaco Grand Prix. We go to Canada next. Hopefully, maybe Canada, my favourite circuit on the calendar. Maybe that's where we get that first first elusive win with this team but until then guys hope you enjoy the rest of your day i'll see you guys next time goodbye